Well, good morning. Once again, it is so good to be in worship with you. And some of you I know are in home, and I'm so glad that you're able to jump in to the Facebook Live. Well, here we are in our second week. I want to say thank you to everyone who shared a dad picture with us. Uh, happy Father's Day to all the dads who are listening to me right now. Uh, you know, it's a tremendous privilege to be a father. And I know we haven't all done everything perfect, but it sure is a blessing to carry the name Dad. It's great to be in worship with you today. Here we are, it's week 15 of online worship, and we're now in our second week of in-person worship. Can I just tell you, I never use the words online or in-person connected to worship at all before all the COVID-19 experience. Well, let me say though, as clearly as possible, whether you are part of the online congregation or you're part of the in-person congregation, I am so blessed to be part of the Florence United Methodist Church family. And friends, you know, it was hard for us to, to kind of connect at times when it was a nine o'clock service and an 11 o'clock service. Can I tell you, we're going to have to really work at staying connected between an online congregation and an in-person congregation. And I'm not really sure what all that means yet. So stay tuned. If you have an idea, share it with us. Uh, we're so glad to be part of the Florence Church family. Over the last several weeks, I've been sharing on some of God's uh, great gifts poured out into our lives. We've, we've talked about the gift of the church, the gift of faith, the gift of grace, the gift of purpose, the gift of power. Today, I wanna to talk about what is probably one of the most obvious gifts. It is the gift of family. Let me ask, how many of you are planning, at least right now, to take some kind of family vacation uh, this summer? Now, I know there have been so many, and I put in quotation marks, victims of 2020. And vacations, concerts and conferences have been some of those victims I know I hope it is possible for you to just get some away time sometime before it's all before the summer ends where would you want to go if you have the chance when and if you do go let me know about it I love hearing about people's travels now some of my greatest family memories are from going on family vacations uh, my parents did a great job of taking us all across the country. We would all pack into the family, you know, Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser. Some of you will remember that big old station wagon. And I mean, eventually there were up to eight of us in that vehicle. Over the years, we traveled from South, South Texas, all the way to California, up to Seattle, across to Colorado. We saw Mount Rushmore. We went to Niagara Falls. Gettysburg, New York City, Washington, D.C. We also traveled all across Mexico. I don't know how my parents stood it. I mean, how many of you are from big families? I have to admit that sometimes when we were on vacation, it really was more like a turf war than a vacation. You know, don't sit in my seat or, you know, daddy, she touched me. It was a turf war with two referees, mom, and dad turn up the air conditioning <laughs> what air conditioning some of you remember those good old days but they were great experiences of growing together as a family my extended family uh, right now in 2020 is planning a get together at an inn in North Carolina uh, late October I am praying it doesn't become one of those 2020 victims before it's all over. You know, there are a lot of changes in life, but what a great thing to know that you always have your family. Sure, school is great, friends are great, but what a treasure to have family. In family, you have your, your heritage, your roots, your name, and every family comes, yep, with a past, a present and a future. One thing our family knows firsthand is that the, my family, that the power of family identi identity is real, even through adoption. Our son, Michael, 
is absolutely a grout and a richie with all the rights and privileges, <laughs> or, or maybe better to say, for better or for worse. Proverbs 22 is the text for our day, for today. And it says, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and favor is better than silver and gold. Thanks be to God for this passage from the scriptures and others that we'll look at. I remember my father telling me what his father had told him when he said to me one day, your name was clean when you got it, keep it that way. That was one of those many, you know, father phrases I heard growing up. Maybe you remember some of those specific father phrases as well. I, I don't know if you have thought about it lately or not, but the name you have makes you very, very rich. We, we've done this before. Uh, on, on the count of three, I want everyone to say out loud your entire name. First name, middle name, last name. Say it with a thankful heart. Say it proudly, even if you're watching by yourself in your, with just your laptop. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. David Theodore Grout II. I was named after my great-grandfather, David Theodore Grout. Uh, so I am not a junior. I am a second. Some of you are named after someone special in your family, an uncle, an aunt, parent, grandparent. I know you'll agree with me when I say it is a joy and a privilege to represent my family wherever I am, whenever I am there. But it's also a responsibility. Remember, that name was clean when you got it. But can I say it was, it was tough, <laughs> a tough at times being a preacher's kid a PK as we were known or called. And I know that there are some other PKs in our congregation. You were always wearing your family name and your dad's job in public. I have mentioned at other times, another father phrase my dad would share with me. He would say, Nunca olvides de donde vienes, which just simply means Never forget where you come from. I've shared how I often interpreted that as a cramp your style kind of statement that my dad would say. He'd say it with a big smile, you know, as, as he was handing me the keys to the family car. Nunca olvides de donde vienes. In other words, uh, you know, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Uh, hope you have a terrible time. Wouldn't you rather stay home and be with us? But you know, I later came to realize it was a set you free phrase. I didn't have to be like anyone else. It didn't matter what their parents said was okay or not. I didn't have to go along if I didn't want to. Why? Because the door to my house and the door to my parents' hearts was always open. The name Grout really was and is a treasure to be, to be prized. Your name is a treasure to be prized more than great riches, silver or gold. Now, family vacations were fun and important, but you know what it, that it really was the family everydays that, that really mattered. How do you make everyday life with your families better? Well, let's talk about that for just a few minutes. Not too surprising. I want to begin with how we speak to one another. You know, if you take a Bible concordance, a Bible app of some sort, and put in words like speech or lips or tongue, you're going to find a long list of ways of how our speech is, is described. Here's a partial list. Bull whips, flattery, swords, poison, fire, lies, unclean, perverse, arrows, but then also righteousness, joy, encouragement, sweetness, 
Now that's quite a range of extremes and we've all experienced probably almost all of those. Proverbs 25, 11 says, a word fitly spoken, spoken in just the right way, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a, in a setting of silver. I've heard it said that the three hardest words in the English language might be, I love you. Well, I think the next three hardest words might be, I forgive you. You know, in case you hadn't noticed, being a family doesn't come with a how-to manual. We're all kind of working on it all the time. James 1.19 says this, let every man, let every woman, be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. I once heard, silence never hollers back words you regret. Let me say that again. Silence never hollers back words you regret. Slow to speak, slow to anger. What are the words we share in the family? Are, are, are we willing for there to be silence? And, and please hear me, I'm not saying to just give people the silent treatment. Mm, that's another whole thing. I'm talking about being willing to listen. Not only are we to watch how we speak, we need to be sure of how we listen. Remember, be swift to hear. Again from Proverbs chapter one, eight and nine. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland of grace to your head and a chain to adorn your neck. Now, I know the thoughts that might enter some of our minds, but I wanna do it my way. They always seem to be against me. I wish they would just, you know, give me some more space. Why won't they just let me be my own person? I think it was Mark Twain that once said, I am amazed at how much smarter my parents got from when I was 12 years old to when I was 21. Can I say, we not only have to listen to one another, but we need to be mindful, especially as parents, maybe grandparents that are watching and listening, that there are ears always listening to us. You know, when you're at the store, you're at the Walmart, and there's not one cashier to be found. Or when you're in a hurry and it seems like the guy that's up ahead of you is waiting for the stop sign to turn green. Or, you know, when your kid spills milk on you just as you're walking out the door and you know you're already running late for work. When you just got pulled over for a speeding ticket and the, the cop has pulled away and then you realize you have a flat tire. You know what I mean. At exactly the time when you would least like someone to be listening to you speak is probably the time they are paying the most attention. In a family, someone is always listening. So in the family, how do we speak? How do we listen? Let me ask, how do we serve? How do you serve the members of your family? I think one major way is by simply spending time with them be with them. And there are many here today who could share a word of testimony, wishing you had just, you know, one more day with that family member who, who passed away, some of them way too young. Many of us have lost our parents. Some of us have even lost one of our children. What would you give for just a, a couple of hours with that person again? I think it's also important, never be ashamed of your family. Can, can I just say what we all know? None of us come from a perfect family, but hey, they gave you your name. Sure, I, I know, I know that little brother is a pain in the neck sometimes because he is your brother. But believe me, I know that because I was that little brother but you know, nothing made me more proud than when my sisters hugged me in public or when they bragged on me, I felt like I was the coolest kid in town. I also want you to hear me say that one way we serve our families is just to simply do what you know you should do. 
And I'm not talking about don't do this and don't do that. And then I'm not even talking about, you know, picking up your dirty clothes in your room and making your bed. I'm talking about doing what you know you should do. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. And those are the, the, the right thing that would make your family proud. It's the right thing. And can I say, those words are not just to the kids. Uh, those words are to the adults, to the parents, to the uh, single adults uh, living on their own, to the, to the college student that's away and now making some decisions that they didn't have to make before. Uh, I think it is for us parents because parents, you have the opportunity to make your children proud of you by doing the right things. Now, as I finish up, let me, take, let me just take all this message and, and apply it to the truth. You already know this. Apply it to the truth that when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we become part of another family. We take on another family name. It is the name Christian. It is a name more valuable than any silver or gold. It is a name that was and still is clean when we get it. It is a name that reminds us not only of where we come from, but it reminds us to whom we belong. Though and through accepting Jesus as Lord, we are adopted into a family with all the rights and privileges and all the identity that comes with that family. It is a name that has a past, a present, and a future. Through repentance and forgiveness, we settle our past. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we live our present day lives as unto the Lord, serving the Lord. As people of the resurrection, we have a peace and a certainty about our future. We have a brother named Jesus, who loves us more than we can ever understand. We're, we're part of a family called the church all around the world, but in our specific case, Florence United Methodist Church. And we need to spend time together. We need to speak well of each other. We speak well to one another and build each other up. We need to do things lovingly as we listen to one another. What a joy to do what we know we should do. You should never be ashamed to claim the name Christian in your private life or your public life. What a privilege to carry the name of Jesus on our lives every day. Remember, the door to God's heart and the door to this church will always be open. Let me say that again. The door to God's heart and the doors to this church will always be open. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and favor is better than silver or gold. Bless the name of Jesus today. I am so thankful to be part of this family. You are a great gift in my life. Let's pray together. Lord, wherever we might be at this very moment, I pray that you would remind us of those who've gone before us, those who have helped us in all the different stages of our lives, the names that have been given to us, the families that they represent, the pasts, the presents, the, the futures that are ours because we're part of those families, but even more because we are part of the family of God through Jesus Christ. We love you. We thank you. We give ourselves to you, Lord. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. What's your name? It's not what your name is. It is what your name represents and who you represent. What a privilege to carry the name Christian. May that be supremely obvious about our lives in the days that are ahead. Now, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Have a wonderful week of ministry. Amen.